worship the God who was. We worship the God who is. We worship the God who evermore will be. He opened the prison doors. He parted the raging sea. My God, He holds a victory. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. And we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in this place. And we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. Oh, oh. We sing to the God who heals. We sing to the God who saves. We sing to the God who always makes the way. Cause he hung up on that cross and he rose up from that grave. My God, still rolling stones away. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. And we won't be quiet. We shout out of your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. And we won't be quiet We shout out your praise We were the beggars Now we're royalty We were the prisoners Now we're running free We are forgiven, accepted Redeemed by His grace Let the house of the Lord sing praise we were the beggars, now we're royalty. We were the prisoners, now we're running free. We are forgiven, accepted, redeemed by His grace. Let the house of the Lord sing praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. And we won't be quiet. We shout. We won't be quiet. We shout out of your praise. Oh, oh, oh. We shout out of your praise. Oh, oh, oh. Prayers of the people. Yes, we do have a lot of prayer requests. They're printed in your bulletin. Apologize. Um, Steve Lifesti had surgery on, on his knees and did well. Um, Sam Warden is a friend of a family at church, and they've asked for prayers for Sam. And the rest have been in here for a while, but God is continuing to work in these lives. So will you go to God in prayer with me, please? Holy and gracious God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for bringing us here, the health that, that allows us to come here and worship together. We thank you for friends and for fellowship. Mostly we thank you for the gift of your son, Jesus Christ, who brings us all together, for the Holy Spirit that unites us as your people. We are your people, Lord. We are your children. Every one of us and everyone outside those doors throughout the world, may we always be reminded that they are our brothers and sisters and that we're encouraged and emboldened to invite them into the faith, into this church, into any church that reflects Jesus Christ. But the only way we can do that is to live it out. So help us to be the image of your son, Jesus Christ. May we be his hands and his feet his voice, and most importantly, his love in the world. Lord, we pray for those on our list who have asked for prayers for themselves and their families. We pray for healing and comfort. We pray for your peace to be with each one and with the caregivers and their families. And Lord, we lift up the, <clears throat> the unspoken prayers <clears throat> that rest in our hearts today, knowing that you care more than we can imagine. We thank you for your gifts, the gift of laughter, 
the gift of family, the gift of hope, and especially for your son, Jesus Christ. We pray all these things in his name as we share together the prayer he taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. If you have your Bibles or you have your Bible on your phone, I invite you to turn to 2 Timothy, near the end of the New Testament. 2 Timothy chapter 3, and it's verses 16 and 17. 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17. All scripture is inspired by God and is useful for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness, so that everyone who belongs to God may be proficient, equipped for every good work. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, in spite of the nature of the presenter, we pray that your will is done in the words that are spoken this day. And we ask these things in the name of the risen Christ Jesus and all of God's church said. I want to talk to you today about first translation in Scripture. And then I want to talk to you about the connotation in the, in the male-dominated, get ready, King James Version. I had a New English Bible, and I've told you this story, but years ago I was so excited. And the pastor of a church gave me this New English Bible. But it didn't say in it, doth how thou dost to thee, half now doth not. And Mrs. Jeffries took my Bible as I was excitedly reading through it and gently closed it where I couldn't read it in Red Oak, Texas in 1977. And I remember being horrified. And she said, this is not the right one. And then when I went home, I said, I can't bring my Bible and open it anymore, which didn't go particularly well with my mom and dad, who had given me that Bible. And he happened to be the pastor of that church. It was written in language that I could understand. I do remember that going, wow, that's what that means. I want to talk to you a little bit about today the book of Timothy. Now, Paul is about to be executed in all probability somewhere in a dungeon in Rome, and he wants to write to Timothy. Timothy's a third generation disciple, we'll say. Paul's writing Timothy to let him know that the scripture needs to remain as a priority regardless of where people pull at him, because they will. They will pull in different directions. There are good, easy times in the church. There are hard times in the church. There are easy times in our personal lives. There are hard times in our personal lives. I love when these elderly couples, and they've been married, you know, 60 some odd years, and no one listens to what they say when someone says, what's the key to your marriage? And they say, well, there were ups and downs, and people go, yeah, yeah, okay. Granny and Grandpa just kind of made it work. But you know, that generation didn't go into big detail about their experience, did they not? My marital advice for my grandfather was this. He puffed on a cigar. We were in the backyard, and the night before I got married, I said, Granddad, do you have any good advice? For a young man that's about to get married, and he puffed on his cigar, and the smoke came out, and he said, Yeah, son, I do. It helps to have a good yard. <laughs> Q.C. Robbins could say so much without saying it. I thank God for a good yard. But the wives need a good yard too, whatever that is. 
Timothy is about to have to deal with people being impatient with the gospel. He's about to deal with the absence of Paul's authority. Paul's about to be executed. And Paul says, I've got to give you this advice. Keep the faith and hold to the scripture regardless of what people tell you it is or isn't. The scripture is the inspired word of God and therefore it is. It is living, it is breathing, it is organic and hold to the scripture. I like this piece of scripture because we get a little inside intimate view of Paul writing to Timothy And the implication is there. There are going to be struggles. There are going to be people with false teachings that are more exciting than the Bible. You've got to hold to that truth. And there are three aspects that I think we need to look at today, particularly in maintaining our equipment. And our equipment is the scripture that is living and breathing in your life and my life. Number one, we need to bring our phone or our tablet or our Bibles to worship. I don't care what form it is, but we need to have it with us. And in the fourth chapter here, the third chapter, it says, all scripture is God breathed. Now, I want to talk to you about Albert Outler, who was a professor at Perkins School of Theology at SMU, and he came up with scripture, tradition, reason, or an experience, which is an acronym for Sam Tries Real Eggs. Scripture, tradition, reason, and experience. We adhere to the Scripture. We believe there are some healthy traditions. We experience Scripture with reason. And it gives us that experience of Almighty God. But this is a little different in Timothy because it has three and it involves you all directly. Scripture, tradition, and ministers of the Scripture who are you are stressed here. You ever met someone and you admire their faith? Will you say amen if you've ever met someone and you admire their faith? There was a lady on a front porch and she had taken in sewing for years. She got to where arthritis could not handle the sewing that she was given. And she began to turn people away and she realized she was soon starving. And on the front porch of her home, she would say, Lord, please give me food. And her next door neighbor from his porch would yell out, there is no God. And she'd look over and she'd say, Lord, please give me food. Not what I want, but what I need. And he would yell, there is no God. Finally, one morning she woke up and there was groceries all along her porch. She walked out to the porch and she said, Lord, I praise you for this food that you've given me. And from her next door neighbor, she hears, ha, I told you there was no God. She goes, oh, yes, Lord, but praise God, you are there. I thank you, God. And he goes, no, there's no God. And she said, you even gave me this food and the devil delivered it. (laughs) Folks, you can use systems in Scripture that are not of God to fulfill God's will. Do you realize that? You can use systems, not fight with them. Use them as an opportunity for an in. You, you get where people are, and if you get where people are, they'll understand what you're saying. And if you understand what you're saying, they'll be receptive to learning. And Paul wants Timothy to know this specifically because he says, hey, don't, don't hit people up with theological perspective that is so deep they don't know yet. First, begin with the sacred nature of the Scriptures how they're holy. And I want to talk to you about that today because I think we need to be careful that we don't think there are those people out there because those people are us. There are those people that are antagonistic. Have you noticed right now you can't turn on the news and get what happened? I don't know a news station where you don't get someone's an opinion It's an opinion or an opinion of a producer that wants you to tell you their version of what happened, not even necessarily what happened. I noticed the headlines the other day are full of adjectives now instead of the Walter Cronkite days. And we've talked about this where he says, and that's the way it was. 
And now you have to say, is that your version of the way it was, or is that the way it was? Is it your perspective on the way it was? And if you are not careful, and I are and not careful, the world will tell us the way it is, and our job is to tell the world the truth in this book by what we do and what we say. We had blessing of the pets yesterday. I've never met, blessed more species of anything than you can imagine. Two turtles. Two rabbits, cats, dogs, and a horse. It was awesome. It was wonderful to have people walk up. I'll bless anything you bring, you bring as long as God created it. And I actually saw a cat yesterday that acted like a dog. Never seen that before. The lady walked it on a leash. And it walked around to all the dogs. Never seen anything like that. And those of you that were there, amen? Was that the most bizarre thing? This cat walk up to this gigantic, long-haired, golden retriever and be like, what's up? <laughs> I'm a cat. And she's got it on a leash. Like, you know when a dog's like, hey. Got to do a horse? Praise God. If you got a horse, bring it up here. If you need me to make house calls, I'll do that too. If you're going to the vet and you have to put the animal to sleep, I love to consecrate that animal. I've done that multiple times. Those are sacred things, and I love when people say this, there'll be no pets in heaven. Well, you go ahead and you go enjoy that heaven. I believe heaven is every blessing we've had on this earth God amplifies in our lives. There's nothing in Scripture that tells us that tells us that God doesn't do that. Yet, I have been at funerals multiple times where so-and-so loved her chihuahua, but you need to know she's not going to see that chihuahua anymore. And I go, what are you doing? <laughs> Show me in the book. You ever wanted to say that to somebody? That's a great opinion, but show me in the book where it says or doesn't say that. And we have all these social norms that are going to come at Timothy where they go, well, Timothy, how it really is, is this. And Timothy says, no, I think I'll hold to the teachings that Paul gave me. And the interesting thing is, in the 16th verse here, it said, all scriptures God breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness. And then 17, so King James modern day translation, right? If you back it up to the Greek, some of you have already translated. If you back it up to the Greek, it says, everyone who believes. An all-encompassing term, but we went, all men. I had a conversation with two Baptist chaplains years ago. And I'll clean up what I said to them, but one of them said, who's got your church? And I said, well, my wife does. Oh. Yeah, you Methodists don't really go by Scripture anyway, do you? Now, there's, there's no one else around. I need you to keep this in mind but a bunch of clergy. And I wheeled around and looked, and a guy that turned out to be a dear friend of mine whose wedding I prayed at, a Jewish wedding, as a Christian named Michael was standing there, and he's got his yarmulke on with camo. Nothing looks more cool with somebody with a yarmulke and camo on. <laughs> like, you look like you're ready to war for the kingdom, right? And Michael would disappear and go to Israel for a few weeks. And the army would let him. And then he would come back. Great rabbi. I also coveted the prayer shawl that the rabbis had. We got stoles, but they got this really great get-up. It's really, really fancy. And, Mike and Michael and I got to be friends, and I finally looked at one of these chaplains who said, well, y'all don't go by Scripture anyway because you let a woman get authority. Oof. We wouldn't want a church like that. And I remember I looked at him and I said, hey, man, and he's leaning back on his pack. I said, first of all, you have no discipline because you're leaning on your equipment. That's unsat. But you fit well in this genre. And he looks at me and I said, secondly, you're really insecure in your manhood. And you are too. 
And I can tell by how oppressive you're trying to be. Show me other than one piece of scripture, if you want a proof text with me, brother, where it says women are not allowed to speak in church. Show me one other piece of scripture. Gosh, we even had women serve communion today. (gasps) Who do they think they are? I'll tell you who they are. They're children of God who got anointed to be here, as are the men. Amen? And what Timothy's really saying in response to Paul and the rest of his ministry is all God's people are included. Paul says, don't let the cultural norms take you and divert the attention from the sacred nature of the Scripture. I've been so surprised at the ignorance based on King James's translators. And this is what I like. Well, you got to know that uh, God wouldn't allow King James scribes to change it to male-dominated anything. They did. If you break this down to the original Greek, you can find time and time again where it says all men. And in Greek, it's all people or all of those who are of God. We have to be careful what causes our equipment to be distorted. My my other thing is this too, you Methodists are Jesus light. And I always say, come get you some of that. You come meet my folks. You want to tell them they're Jesus light? Why don't you stand in the middle of a Sunday school class and announce that? See how well that works out for you. I love Timothy because just a few short chapters here in 2 Timothy, but Paul says, I have no agenda, I'm checking out. I'm about to be taken out of this world and I know it. And so I'm going to leave you with these last words. Folks, worship is maintaining your equipment. Praying is maintaining your equipment. Discipleship is maintaining your equipment. Coming and supporting or praying for blessing of the pets is maintaining your equipment. Thanking the Lord for your food is maintaining your equipment. Praying for others in need and remembering what their needs are is maintaining your equipment. This should be living and breathing in your life. Turn with me as we close to the 106th chapter of the Psalms, if you would. Paul is essentially warning Timothy of the 106th chapter of Psalms here. If you look down to Psalm 106, verses 34 through 36, God has instructed the Israelites to come in and basically decimate these cultures. Now, we know today we don't need to decimate human beings, but we do need to decimate cultures through not identifying with them or practicing them. And this is what God says in the psalm. They did not destroy the peoples concerning whom the Lord had commanded them, but they mingled with the Gentiles and learned their works, and they served their idols, which became a snare to them. This is the word of God for the people of God. Want to stay free from the snare? Stay in this book. Want to be careful you don't start and I don't start practicing idolatry with our agenda? Stay in this book. Folks, in the name of Jesus Christ, let us all together maintain our equipment. And let us remember who we are and whose we are in Christ. I pray that for you this very week. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, all God's church said, amen. We give the invitation. I'm getting a little better at this, but not much. The Reeves family is joining You've seen little Virginia with red hair running around the church. Uh, They're joining today. They have five beautiful children. And uh, Trudy is going to stay with me to get their picture made. We have four pictures that are missing from our board. We've got to track these people down and get them captured like they would in Africa, where they take their soul and put it in a picture. We're going to hunt them down and get them on the board so you know who they are. And I ask that you celebrate 
someone finding faith here. Do you realize half of these families right now have never had a church home that are coming to join here? Do you realize what that speaks to your ministry here? So I ask that you consider whether or not you'd like to be baptized, accept Jesus Christ as your Savior, or you'd like to join with this congregation. You won't better find a better group of people who are sinners just trying to get it right. We would celebrate that with you. Let's stand and praise God one last time. Oh, I have days of losing fight. Try my best, just don't get it right. Where I talk a talk that I don't walk. Miss the moments right before my eyes. Somebody with a hurt that I could have helped. Somebody with a hand that I could have held. Now I just can't see past myself. Lord, help me be a little more like mercy, a little more like grace, a little more like kindness, goodness, love, and faith. A little more. like me Yeah, there's no denying that I have changed I've been saved who I used to be but Even at my best I must confess I still need help to see the way you see Somebody with a hurt that I could have helped Somebody with a hand that I could have helped When I just can't see past myself Lord, help me be A little more like mercy A little more like grace A little more like kindness Goodness, love and faith A little more like patience A little more like peace A little more like Jesus A little less like me Look to be your hands and feet Freely give what I receive Lord, help me be I want to put you first above all else Love my neighbor as myself In the moments no one sees Lord, help me be A little more like mercy A little more like grace A little more like kindness Goodness, love and faith A little more like patience A little more like peace A little more like Jesus Oh, a little less like me A little more like living Everything I preach A little more like Jesus A little less like me Oh, a little less like me Let's receive the benediction. Heavenly Father, as we go out into the world, we thank you for this worship today and those that make you a priority today in that worship. Remind them that they have chosen what they need to choose in serving you. Remind them, Lord, that they have maintained their equipment. We thank you for your inspired word. Help us to live it and help us to lead others to it and ultimately your will in Christ. Bless all gathered this week. May they feel your presence in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit. And all of God's church said together, amen. amen. Have a blessed week, church.